Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. As the owner of brands such as TiVo, DTS, and HD Radio, among other things, the company that our next guest is with invents, develops, and delivers technologies that enable extraordinary experiences. You may remember we had him on the show at IFA in Berlin a while back. Always a delight to chat with the senior VP and general manager for consumer and media platform with a company called Xperi, Ben Mond. Ben, welcome back into tomorrow. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Great to uh, see you again, Dave. Oh, great to have you with us as well, because uh, as more and more people are getting more and more entertainment from various sources, we have to look at some of the best ways to get that entertainment. And uh, full disclosure, as president of my rather large homeowners association, uh, I signed a contract recently with a company called Hotwire and their Fission uh, TV service, which come to find out is uh, all using the TiVo operating system. And I couldn't be happier about that. We talked about powered by TiVo back at IFA. So what's new since then for the TiVo OS? Or do you just say TiVo OS? Yeah, no, it, uh, that's definitely a faster way to say it. But uh, we call it TiVo OS. Um, what's new is uh, at IFA, we announced that Vestel, the largest TV OEM in Europe, uh, is uh, building and manufacturing uh, uh, smart TVs powered by TiVo. Uh -huh. And one thing that we we shared and announced at CES and sharing with you today, Dave, and your listeners, is they've also announced the brands that are going to be carrying these these TVs. Um, JVC, Hitachi, Toshiba, Telefunken, uh, Daewoo, Regal, those last couple are very Europe-centric, yeah. um, are all going to be um, powered by TiVo smart TVs. Well, that's excellent. And, and, and how does that compare? Because you mentioned smart TVs. And in fact, we had a, a caller on the show recently that was saying, it seems like there's only smart TVs these days because I'm, I'm looking for another TV, but I don't want a really large one. It doesn't have to be smart because I've got all these adapters and, you know, fire sticks and things of that nature. What's the difference between your standard smart TV and one with TiVo OS? Yeah, it's a great question, Dave. So uh, a smart TV uh, refers to any internet connected TV, right? And I think that's about 85% of the US market, maybe 80% of the, the European market, if not higher. Um, and for these internet connected TVs, because it's connected to the internet, you have so much more capability on what you can do on those TVs because the compute power is not just what's in the TV, but also with what's in the cloud. And so you have various uh, operating systems inside of these smart TVs trying to figure out the best way to help consumers find, watch, and enjoy entertainment. So you have mm -hmm. Samsung with Tizen, LG with WebOS, uh, some of the other TV OEMs with Roku TV, Fire OS, Google TV, and then you have our, our media platform, our operating system, TiVo OS. So all those others that you mentioned are, in essence, competitors, I'm assuming, to TiVo OS. Uh, but you guys do some unique things that really stand out. Yeah, exactly. So those all are competitors. Uh, one thing that we do that's, that's fairly unique is we have a content-first experience. So instead of a sea of apps experience where you have to go app by app by app to find content, yeah. and you have to know where the content is, we, we extract all of the content from the applications and put it on a single interface and UI. So if you want to find, you know, where's, you know, the, the animated uh, movie Puss in Boots, where to watch that, you know, our platform does the thinking for you, right? Nice. If you want to see where can you find Die Hard 3, our platform figures it out. Because that's one of my biggest issues, and I, I chalk it up to uh, old age and dementia coming in or something. I don't know. It's like, yeah, I want to watch the latest uh, White Lotus or something, but what the heck? Who is Is that Prime? No, wait, is Hulu? No, I think it might be on Netflix. And, and I don't remember. <clears throat> so unless I make a note on my phone or put it in the calendar, hey, don't forget next week to watch this on this, it's, I'm searching like crazy. And usually what happens is it ends up bringing up 
where you can buy it or rent it. And it's like, no, I, I know I have this. <laughs> so, yeah. so TiVo yes. does it for me. Can, can I ask with a voice remote? Do, I, do we have that capability? Uh, yes, actually. So we have TiVo's best in class voice search. You can put in things like show me the money because you remember the tagline from Jerry Maguire. Yeah. And it will figure out this is the, uh, the, you know, the consumer is trying to find Jerry Maguire. So I don't even have in. to know the name of the show. I can say something that is so obvious. Everybody knows, oh, that came from that movie or that TV show or something. Yeah. How often do we remember catchphrases but not movie names? All the time. <laughs> All the time, yeah. right? And that's what our voice solution does that's unique. No other operating system can do things like that. Um, we joke around and we talk about the movie with Ben Stiller and Matthew McConaughey where they reference a TiVo in the closing scene. Right. And you guys may or may not know that's Tropic Thunder. Right. And our voice solution uh, knows that those different characteristics are within these movies. And so it can find that content based on the plot or based on what you remember from that movie. Wow. And if it can do that, I'm assuming it also does, you know, favorite actors or actresses or something. And you can say, I'm, I'm looking for a recent movie from so-and-so. And TiVo will bring up the recent movies. Like, oh, that's it. That's the one. <laughs> exactly. You could say, find me the recent movies from Tom Hanks. Yeah. And it will literally sequentially order the, the recent movies from Tom Hanks. So that's obviously you guys have solved, I guess, the, the problem with content discovery, because I personally, that's my biggest issue. And I hear from so many people that say, yeah, if I can only remember where I was watching such and such, I want to see the last few episodes. <laughs> and so I think we can all relate to that. Now, other folks that say, no, I only subscribe to Prime or something. Well, that's easy because <laughs> it's got to be there if they were watching something else. But these days, there are so many sources providing so much content that I think most people are certainly using far more than one or two platforms. Yeah, actually, we uh, we do a video trends report and we found that the average household now has a double digit amount of streaming services or video platforms that they use to find content. Wow. And yeah, it's, <laughs> and, and we know that about 50 percent of the time consumers know exactly which app to go into to watch the content. But about 50% of the other time, they have no idea what app it's in, uh, how to find it, and that's what our content first experience strives to do. So it's not so much old age or dementia, it's just the fact that we're all busy and we're doing other things and we have so many platforms. My gosh, you know, 10 or more on average, that, that blows your mind. And yes. so it's a matter of you don't have to worry about that. The, the other option is, of course, well, Google it. It'll list some things that you might find. And hopefully one of the platforms is one of the ones you subscribe to. Uh, but it's so much easier, it sounds like, to be able to just ask TiVo to play it. Exactly. And, and if you think about it, there's other operating systems that try to be more than just a media and entertainment platform. Yeah. And we're focused on being an independent media and entertainment platform. So when you go into that operating system and you put in the word BAT, that system does not realize you're likely talking about Batman. They think you're talking about bat videos on YouTube. Oh, geez, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> so there's a lot of value in an operating system that is focused on media entertainment, focused on smart TVs, focused on the glass, bringing that universal uh, content first experience. And Ben, please tell me that I can hear some of the old legacy sounds that I used to hear on TiVo being the first DVR, what seems like a hundred years ago, uh, but sounded so cool that doo -doo -doo, or, I mean, I'm trying to remember some of them, but yeah. to me, that was all part of the experience, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So one thing that we, we decided to bring back as part of TiVo OS, and we're putting into smart TVs powered by TiVo is some of those original TiVo sounds yes. from, you know, the early 2000s of fast forward, select, uh, you know, moving between uh, pieces of content um, in the uh, in the UI. Right. Has all those sounds that we love and are familiar with from when 
TiVo invented the DVR. Oh, love it. And you got to have a fun job. I envy you. Uh, of course, people say, no, I'd rather have your job, you know, meaning me. But <laughs> I think that that whole idea of rediscovering TiVo and the experiences we had before uh, are really awesome. And, and I can't wait because, uh, again, I understand the company that I signed with for our homeowners association uh, is using TiVo OS. And, and they talk about the, the excitement that is generated by that in other properties where they're already using it. And I'm thinking, well, I just, I can't wait to be able to experience that. Uh, and in this case, especially for content discovery, it's going to make a huge difference. Now, do you sell any of the platforms or is it a matter of the, the consumer still selects whatever it is they want uh, from whatever source and you just happen to put it together or we identify what we pay for or what? Yeah, that's... Um so uh, we are an independent media platform. So we do not put our finger on the scale, as we call it, <laughs> and push content that is in our self-serviced interest. We are all about providing consumers what is interesting to them because we have data and experience that if you provide consumers the fastest way to find content that they watch, they continue to engage in the platform, they watch more content, and that rising sea lifts all boats, uh, right? Yeah. We do provide a free um, ad-supported uh, content network, a, uh, a service called TiVo Plus that has about 100 free uh, cable channels. Um, it's all ad-supported, it's all free. But again, that is something that's part of the, the native operating system, but we don't um, uh, promote that content any different than we would promote content from Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, uh, Discovery, all the all the main options out there. Well, terrific. I'm certainly going to be talking it up and enjoying it. Uh, it's going to take a few months to get our whole uh, association, our whole community wired up. It's all fiber. It's all going to be some of the, the best technology. Uh, but once we are cut over and ready to go, I know I'm going to be pumped and we'll get you back and we'll talk about yet more things that you guys are doing at TiVo and at Xperi. Uh, thanks so much, Ben, for spending another few minutes with us. I look forward to talking some more because keep inventing and reinventing. Uh, we love it. Awesome. Dave, thank you. Appreciate your time very much. It's our pleasure. Ben Mon is the Senior Vice President and General Manager for the Consumer and Media Platform with Xperi. At, that's X-P-E-R-I. So you can visit Xperi.com or even easier to remember in this case for this interview, TiVo. Dot com, T I V O dot com. We'll get you there when you visit us at intotomorrow.com. I'm Dave Graveline. Stay tuned. Much more to come as we bring you further into tomorrow, right here on the Advanced Media Network. <laughs>